What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, a few months back, actually quite a few months back, uh, when we were in New Mexico, we were at staying at a campground out there that had no hookups. Uh, we took that opportunity to show you guys how we plug our fifth wheel straight into the inverter so that we can power everything inside the fifth wheel that we want to power. A couple things, we did it in New Mexico uh, when it was incredibly windy outside. As soon as we started recording that video, the wind started picking up, so the audio quality of that video is absolutely terrible off of our inverter and uh there's a real simple way you can hook it up and uh it'll work uh the other thing is it generated a lot of comments and a lot of people had questions about some different things uh, maybe some stuff that i didn't cover didn't explain very well so i want to take this video as an opportunity to answer some of those questions uh give a little better overview of our system So I'll start off with an overview of our batteries and then our inverter. Uh, the inverter that we use is a Renogy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, it's been fantastic. We've been extremely happy with it. The batteries that we use are a pair of 100, uh, 100 amp hour, actually 105 amp hour, North Star Group 31 AGMs. Uh, the North Star batteries are a thin plate pure lead battery, has a high reserve capacity, at 105 amp hours, 220 minutes of reserve per battery. Uh, so we wired those in parallel. So we have 210 amp hour battery bank uh, with 440 minutes of reserve. That's kind of the heart of your inverter system is your battery bank. That's gonna determine uh, how long you can run things on the inverter. So that's the choice that we made. Um, that brings up kind of one of the main questions that we got with our previous video and that is why didn't we go lithium I have a very extensive history in the battery industry before we started traveling full-time uh, I managed a battery store in South Florida where we installed batteries on a lot of big yachts uh, sport fish yachts sailboats uh, motor yachts those vessels have very very large battery banks uh, and a lot of those were using the North Star group 31 AGM batteries it's something I had experience with, um, have an outstanding reputation. They're just a, a bulletproof battery. Uh, are they heavy? Yes, they are. They're much heavier than lithium, but it's, it's something that I knew. It's something that I understood. If we have a problem with our battery bank or with our electrical system, uh, I don't have to guesswork about, you know, is it our lithium batteries that are causing the problem? Um, none of that. You know, so it was just what we were comfortable with going with at the time. Now, would I maybe expand and look into lithium? I might. The price is starting to come down some. Uh, might look into lithium, but still, it's it's really hard to beat a good quality AGM battery. So that's why we went with the AGM batteries, um, mostly just because it's just something that I had experience with that I understood, and I knew, you know, I knew what I had when I installed those. North Star is now owned by Odyssey Battery Company. So if you're looking for a North Star battery, you're probably not gonna find it. You would have to buy an Odyssey. Uh, the Odyssey part number for the exact same battery that we have now that they have combined into one company is a PC2150. That's the Odyssey part number. It's gonna be the same batteries that we have and uh, they are outstanding and they're about as bulletproof as you can get when it comes to AGM batteries. So another question that we got was how everything is wired up. Um, so the way our system is wired, uh, very straightforward, very simple. We do have a battery monitor wired in with our uh, battery bank. So that's the only thing that uh, trips people up sometimes, but it's super simple. There, there's nothing complicated about how to wire it up. Uh, we have the positive cable from our battery bank going up to the inverter. The negative cable from the battery bank goes to one side of our battery monitor shunt and then all the other negatives come off the other side of the shunt that includes the negative going to the inverter that includes the main uh, negative for our regular 12 volt system here in the trailer 
And if you run all your negatives off one side of the shunt and just have only your main battery negative hooked to the other side, uh, you're gonna be able to see exactly what you're drawing from your batteries. So the battery monitor is very important, especially if you're trying to not discharge your batteries down too far. You don't wanna discharge your battery bank more than 50%. So I only wanna use 105 amp hours of my total capacity so I don't discharge those batteries down too far. If you only discharge your battery bank about 50% before you recharge it, you're gonna get tremendous life out of your batteries. Uh, if you're running them all the way down until they're flat dead and then trying to recharge them, that's very hard on the batteries. Um, you're not gonna get the kind of life that you would if you only discharge them down 50%. A battery monitor is gonna allow you to look at that. It's gonna allow us, um, it also allows us to know when we turn lights on or when we have something plugged in, um, you know, when the refrigerator fans are running, it shows us exactly what the draw is and we can really monitor that and kind of adjust our, our uh, power usage throughout the day and mostly throughout the night. And that's what we mainly use our battery monitor for. So that leads us to the next part of our system and that is our Victron uh, 25 amp battery charger. So the Victron 1225 Blue Smart battery charger is a fantastic unit. Uh, we went with that We've kind of started using that instead of our standard converter that came in the fifth wheel. Uh, your, your converter, your stock standard converter, is going to do a couple things. It's going to charge your batteries, and it's also going to provide 12 volt power to all your 12 volt accessories uh, when you're plugged into shore power. So when you're plugged into shore power, your converter is going to provide all of your uh, 12 volt power to your accessories versus trying to run everything just on your batteries. Um, what I noticed with those two AGM batteries is our converter was not doing a very good job getting them all the way 100% charged, keeping them fully charged. Um, I didn't want to damage the batteries by undercharging them, so I installed the Victron 1225 Blue Smart battery charger. That has been fantastic. You can connect to it via the Victron app, Bluetooth on your phone. The other reason I like it is I can keep an eye on the way uh, the charge pattern, the way the batteries are being charged, make sure they're getting to 100%. You can pull up a history uh, so that you know the last complete cycle that the charger completed as far as getting your batteries 100% charged. Um, it will show you if a cycle was interrupted. And again, it just does a fantastic job of getting those, especially those pure lead AGM batteries. Uh, they like to be hit pretty hard as far as uh, the charging algorithm. They like a little bit, a little bit higher voltage uh, and that Victron charger will, will charge them up and uh, just take super good care of them. Our batteries are still in excellent shape and uh, we're going on a little over two years now on these batteries uh, with that charger. So now that we've kind of shown the way everything's wired, uh, I'll, I'll get into what you need if you're going to run your rig the way we run ours and that is to plug in your fifth wheel directly into your inverter and be able to power anything that you can power on a 2000 watt inverter. Uh, obviously if you have a larger inverter, then you'll be able to power more stuff. But for us, 2000 watts is perfect. First thing you're gonna need is a 20 amp extension cord. We have a 50 foot extension cord, uh, heavy duty 20 amp. I do not have a 20 amp plug on the inverter, so I need a 20 amp adapter to a uh, standard 15 amp plug that's on the inverter. Uh, the 20 amp plug is gonna have, instead of having two uh, two vertical spades, you're gonna have a vertical and one's gonna be horizontal. So you'll need an adapter to be able to plug that into your inverter. That's why we use the adapter uh, that I showed in our previous vid video. From there, you're gonna run it. Uh, we run it through uh, the vent hole in our old battery box and out the bottom of the fifth wheel to the back of the trailer. And then I have a 50 amp to 15 amp adapter so that I can plug our extension cord. It just screws in right into our regular 50 amp uh, receptacle on the back of the fifth wheel. That's it. Now, before I turn that inverter on, I open our breaker panel and I have our charger. Uh, the cord is run up into the basement and it's plugged into the receptacle where our converter used to be plugged in. So I'm going to shut the converter breaker off. You have to turn your battery converter or battery charger off before you turn the inverter on. If you turn your inverter on without shutting your converter or battery charger off, uh, your inverter is gonna send power to the fifth wheel. Your battery charger or converter 
is going to come on and try to charge the batteries that your inverter is drawing from. So what will eventually happen, first of all, you'll notice a very, very high draw on your battery monitor. You'll see a, you'll see a big, big draw. Um, that's going to be your first clue that you forgot to turn something off. So you'll kill your batteries very quickly. Um, you can't have a, a perpetual, uh, a perpetual cycle of your charger charging the batteries that the inverter is pulling off of to power your charger. From there, I also turn off anything that I don't want to accidentally turn on while we're running on the inverter. Uh, one of that, one of those things is the microwave. Um, not that I would run the microwave on the inverter, but we have a habit of turning on our light, our uh, uh, hood lamp, you know, underneath the microwave. Uh, if we're cooking or doing something over on the stove, we'll just kick that light on to, to shine a little bit of extra light on the counter. And uh, I have a bad habit of turning that on. And if you turn that on while you're uh, running on your inverter, those bulbs are not very efficient. Uh, they're not LED, so they draw a lot of power. Uh, I don't want to kick that on and, and draw all that extra power off of the inverter and off the battery bank. Uh, so I just turn our microwave breaker off. Um, if you're afraid somebody's going to turn the air conditioner on, you can turn the AC breaker off or you can just not turn your air conditioner on. If you have an electric water heater and you leave your electric water heater on, normally you're going to make sure that's turned off. Uh, the water heater will also draw a tremendous amount. And then the final thing is the refrigerator. Make sure to turn it over and we turn it on propane so that the only draw is just the fridge fans that are running. They only pull, um, they only pull about three amps. Just kind of an overview. Before we turn the inverter on, we turn our converter breaker off, microwave breaker off. We turn the water heater off or over onto gas. And then we turn our refrigerator over to uh, propane. Then we turn the inverter on. And you'll know right away, you'll know right away, if you turn that inverter on, and you see a draw that goes way up to, to like 15 or 20 amps, you know that some, there's something that you forgot to turn off that's drawing a lot of power. Uh, normally when we turn the inverter on, I'm gonna see like maybe seven or eight amps. We will, we will never see a draw over 10 amps uh, on our battery monitor as long as we have all of our uh, big stuff shut off uh, that we wanna shut off. The next thing that, uh, that you're gonna wanna have is solar panel. Uh, we have the Renogy 200 watt portable solar panel. So I also have a 20 foot extension cable for that. So I can plug the extension cable in, uh, make our cables very long. I can move it wherever I need to move it in the campsite to get it out into full sun. Uh, they've worked out fantastic for us. The Renogy suitcase 200 watt solar panel uh, has a 20 amp charge controller. That particular set of solar panels uh, in full sun is going to get us somewhere right around 13 amps so it does a fine job of keeping the batteries charged during the day and providing enough power to kind of offset what we use in the trailer during the day uh, kind of a rule of thumb you're going to get about six amps of power per 100 watt solar panel so if you have a single 100 watt solar panel you're going to get about six amps of charge uh, two of them you'll get 12 to 13 amps depending on uh, how much sun you can get it in, but ours will put out right around 13 amps. And, uh, you know, if we're only using six or seven amps during the day and that solar panel is providing 13 amps, then we have a surplus that's going to help keep the batteries charged, keep them topped off during the day so that once the sun goes down, uh, then we're, you know, we're going to be good to go for the night. Um, I would recommend still having a generator as a backup. Uh, we still use ours quite a bit, you know, if um, if you have a cloudy day or if you have a few cloudy days in a row or you're parked somewhere where you can't get really good sun on your solar panels, uh, it's really nice to be able to start that generator up so that you can run your battery charger or your converter and get those batteries boosted back up uh, so you don't get in a situation where your batteries are super dead every day and uh, barely having enough charge to last you through the night, especially if you're camping in the cold weather where you're going to need to run the heater then you're definitely going to want to make sure those batteries are fully charged before the sun goes down because that heater um, it, it puts a beating on those batteries overnight uh, it, once it starts running that's pretty much the gist of it i mean uh you know the things that i would definitely recommend if you're going to run this setup um, are definitely a pure sine wave inverter definitely a battery monitor that battery monitor has been has just been a lifesaver as far as be for us being able to manage 
our power usage and making sure that we can get through the night. It's, it's really allowed us to take really good care of the batteries. Uh, we know when our charger is running. It's a very, very simple setup. Um, I know I went through all that and some of it might sound kind of complicated, but it's it's really not. It's really not complicated at all. Um, all, you're, all you're doing is plugging your trailer into your inverter, you know, via an extension cord. Um, you know, again, you're not going to run your air conditioner. You're not going to put stuff in the microwave and, and, you know, it's not like having a big inverter set up with a big battery bank to where you can run your whole entire trailer, but it is absolutely enough to be able to run, um, all your outlets and your receptacles uh, we have our little weather station that we like to have plugged in so we can see what the weather's doing outside um you know it'll run all that it's it's worked fantastic for us we couldn't be happier with it um it's a it's a inexpensive and easy way you know if you don't boondock all the time if you're if it's just occasionally like we do or you know uh, occasionally camping at campgrounds that don't have electrical hookups um it just works out fantastic i would again I would recommend having a generator kind of as a backup uh, just to be safe and a portable solar panel so that you can you know put that sucker out and get your batteries charged and then uh, you know be in good shape. I'll leave a link to our previous video if you want to go back and watch it. Um, again I apologize for the audio quality um, while we're outside talking and all that wind but I think it's still good enough to get the point across. You can kind of see our setup. You can see how we hook everything up. Um, and you know, if you have any questions or anything I didn't cover here, feel free to leave a comment. We answer all of our comments. Uh, we answer all the questions and uh, you know, we're happy to help when we can. That's going to do it. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you guys down the road.